Well, two right now. So yeah, it's used to break. If Selt yeah. beats Milkins and Chris Milkins Frank, beats Walden, five players could get to to three points. So Selby and Wilson aren't in yet. I will they amend were, it again. There we are. They're all very clear. All very clear as this match starts. M- main thing is uh, always in this event, just try and win, and the rest will look after itself. Whoever wins this match, guaranteed on four points. But of course, Selby has got another one to play later against Jamie Jones. I think with Wilson, we both commentated on one of these matches this morning, Dave, and I think with him, the chief priority will be to improve. Yeah, but I think I think you're right, but I, I don't think that last result will have much bearing on this match because he would always, whenever he plays Mark Selby, be ready to play him and maybe even raise his game subconsciously to play him. Good opener from what? Selby. He's coming into the new year feeling good, having won the English Open just before Christmas. Still needs a good pot on the black here. That's exactly what he delivered. Another wrinkle, of course, here is that very Eight. unusually. Karen Wilson will have played three consecutive matches here on table one. Normally, players get to play back-to-back -back at times, but three, that's unusual. No. Well, he did say last season, didn't he, that he, he feels he should be on table one at tournaments, so he can't complain this afternoon. I love it, Dave. I love it. Can't get him off the table. Anyway, he's not on the table now. Mark Selby already in, looking to hit the ground running here. Sixty. Not far from very uh, snooker club where he learned his trade. It no longer exists, Willie Thorns, but 70. the memories and the, the legacy of it run right through the game, not just for Selby, but many of the, the top players now, the likes of Sean Murphy and Judd Trump, many others who played there as juniors. Yes, and the Willie Thorne Snooker Centre was home for many years to one of the biggest pro-ams in the game, the Everard's Brewery Pro-Am. It was big money for the winner. 25. And because of that, the field was so powerful. Didn't have the 33. angle to stay on the black. So, you know, one four sevens, but he wants to sure win the frame at this visit where the Reds are. He'd be disappointed not to. Made his 750th career century yesterday. One of those scenarios where the balls are that even if you don't get nice on the red you play on, you'll probably be on another one. At least one more. Thirty-nine. Three times Masters champion, but he's not actually got past the quarter-final stage at the Masters for nine years, so tournament in recent times he's not experienced a lot of success in you want to put that right next week as it stands he doesn't actually know who he plays does he because Yao Zing Tong has been suspended but that's pending an appeal which apparently will be known today 45. so obviously if that's not successful someone else will be in the same for five next on the list and you can never <coughs> underestimate Vafai who is a fine player who's had Success against Selby in the past. 
of the last two Yugo Championships, in fact. I guess for Hussein, I mean, he'll be very excited if he does get in it. He's got to immediately get to grips with the atmosphere there, which will be somewhat alien to him. Anyway, that's potentially to come on Sunday night. Right now, Selby's still going. Fifty nine. Well, I guess if it's going to go wrong, it'll be here on this shot as he comes in and out of bulk for the next red. But it hasn't, so 65. he's two balls away from winning the opening frame. Having not played for around a fortnight, it was hardly surprising that Selby looked extremely rusty yesterday, missing balls that you would never imagine he would miss. But I think he's gained an awful lot from that time at the table. 71. And I always thought he'd be a different Kettler fish today. Seven seats. Seventy eight. Seventy nine. Well, he's made this look so easy, never been in trouble. That Celts uh, high break you were talking about, Phil, may uh, be under threat here. Eighty-six. Yeah, I don't think Selby hasn't thought about it. That's what makes the greats great. Whatever they get, they want more. Pleased to see that. <laughs> Nancy He's watching upstairs. Just, just his way here, so unless he can make some sort of plan. Cheers, Mark. Thank break you. over. Mark Selby, 94. No century, but a first. smooth, accomplished contribution, nevertheless. The break ends at 94. The frame ends with Mark Selby 1 0 up on Karen Wilson. Mark Selby, 1-0 up on Karen Wilson. As for table two, well, Ricky Walden, Rob Milkins has begun early stages. The second frame. Walden leading 27-0 in the opening frame. And 
new temporary members of the Ricky Walden fan club will be Matthew Selt and Jordan Brown. A Walden win there would do both of them a favour. It's another great red, just waiting to see where this cue ball is going to finish. So another good initial pot. Flicked off the black, he's never quite sure where the white is going to come to rest. Looks like he's taking this on. Feeling confident, clearly. Mike Leaving himself the long red, didn't get the green though. Wilson happy to see some sort of pot for the first time in the match. Whoa. The reason I called him a mini Selby is not just about temperament, it's about work ethic as well. He's also Eight. really made the most of everything he's got and has always looked to keep improving through hard work. No. I don't think enough credit is given to the players who maybe are not blessed with the natural ability as much as some others, but put the work in because you know, natural talent, if that is what you're born with, you haven't had to work for it. Obviously, you've got to work to keep at a certain level and marshal what you've got into a winning formula. Wilson has certainly done that. But most players, when we talk about natural talent, most players have had to work hard, including the players we think of as the, the natural talents. It's what you don't see, of course, 50. all the hours they put in over the years. Yeah, sure. I can understand why parallels are drawn between these two. Both tough, uncompromising match players who, as Dave said, are very dedicated. Yeah, very nearly played in the World Final, didn't they, two years ago? Selby made it through, but uh, Karen, from quite a long way in front, was beaten by Sean Murphy. 16. Yes, and both of them were involved in arguably the greatest single day of snooker ever. That crazy semi-final day when Wilson just about outlasted Anthony McGill and Mark Selby was pipped at the post by Ronnie O'Sullivan. To have one semi-final like that, Dave, in a championship would have been something memorable. To have two on the same day, it was remarkable. Yes, it was an unforgettable day. And, uh, you know, these people who say that the semis are too long and they should be cut, well, careful what you wish for, because the reward you get for waiting it out for the first two days is a final day like that, which we still talk about and will talk about for many, many years to come. Thirty-two. This, of course, is a sprint here. It's best of five, and Wilson looking to hit back. So Mark Selby <laughs> you know, played a good first frame, potted the long red, took the green on, leaving himself a long red, didn't get the green. Wilson knocked the long red in, and he's given himself every chance to level up here. Thirty-nine. And even if three points does prove enough, to make the playoffs. There's no doubt Wilson would like to go 40. into them in the next session with a good display under his belt.
45. Well, what it's worth, which isn't 46. a great deal. This is their 12th meeting in the Championship League over the years. <coughs> Selby has won seven of the previous 11. Fifty-three. Well, two fine tacticians, but this match has been all about potting. Just the one miss from Selby opened the door to Karen Wilson. Fifty-nine. Two more reds required for the frame. Sixty. I'll tell you what, we've just had an extraordinary thing happen over on table two. Basically, Rob Milkins 65. and Ricky Walden, and indeed the referee, John Pellew, thought he'd missed the black, thought he'd overcut it. It hung on the pocket for what 66. seemed like an age, and then finally dropped in. That black didn't drop in, Karen Wilson, but Wilson should have done enough. 65 in front, 59 on, but now he's given himself potential angst. And he knows it as well. He knows Mark Selby. He's going to give this everything, clear away three of the four reds, what? try and get the snook on the last red. You look where the yellow and the brown are. Yeah. That's going to be a nasty spot. So it's just, as you say, put himself under it for no reason really here. Uh, Rob Spencer is having trouble yesterday with that extended rest, but he seems to have uh, all is well today, I think. Yeah, we spoke to him about it this morning, didn't we? And he laid the blame squarely on poor old Ricky Walden. Cheers, Mark. Thank you. Mind you, considering that Walden's the first player to qualify for the playoffs, I think poor old Ricky Walden is perhaps not the best way to describe him at the moment. A rich old Ricky Walden. Eight. Nine. Karen Wilson knows there's potential pain coming down the highway here. Once Selby gets down to the last red, he'll keep it on the table. And then the 60. fun begins. Yeah, like that scene 70. in Rocky Three when the interviewer asks Clever Lang for his prediction for the fight and he just looks at him and says, pain. You know, that's the situation with Selby when he needs snookers and he gets his teeth into a frame. He'll be eyeing the prize, look where the yellow is, next to the brown. Twenty-five. Thought you might keep the red on, purely because of the free ball, but as you say, I suppose he thinks it's a nailed on snooker with the yellow. He'll need another one though after it, because he needs two. get where he wanted to be. 32. Chance missed that. He didn't get the right angle to come in behind the brown off the yellow. He hasn't got a snooker. I'm surprised he potted the red, Phil, were you? Yeah, I was. I thought the... 
the yellow being next to the brown would be of interest to him later on. That's why I said it, but not at that precise moment. and could have got him in trouble, he didn't actually in the end. And bear in mind, Wilson's played three straight matches here. So he doesn't want to expend too much unnecessary mental energy. That's why I'll be delighted where that cue ball finished. Yeah, Selby, if he was going to pop the red, obviously he needed to get the right angle on the yellow, which he didn't get, to lay the snoop behind the brown, and now he's in one himself, so challenge just faded a little bit. It's, well, it's over now. Karen Wilson, seven on the front. It is officially Mark Selby concedes, and so Karen Wilson, primarily with a break of 66, draws level. It's one frame each. The Bed Victor Championship League. It is Group Three, Day Two, Table One. Mark Selby and Karen Wilson. The winner will definitely be in the playoffs later on today. Third frame. Mark it's one one. A race to three. What a cracking shot that was. To be really pernickety, would have liked a little bit of extra pace on the cue ball to leave him a tad straighter on the black, but nevertheless, great pot. Karen was some great pot for one point. You see there, that shot was just so clever from Selby. Dislodged a red partially, left a great angle to go into them. And now he's away. Thanks. Well, as you say, set it up perfectly, you played it perfectly. It's a dream split. It's help yourself time. first match on this table yesterday morning Selby led Mark Matthew Selt 2-1 Mr. Real Easy Red to the top left hand pocket Nine. with a great chance for 3-1 lost 3-2 but ever since even though he's missed a few he's had the winning formula yeah 
Yeah, as, a, as a, an aircraft passes up, maybe that's Ali Carter on his way back. But uh, yeah, I think the thing with Selby, he, he just looks confident. And obviously that's come from the success he had in that English Open. He's positive, he's not prevaricating over shots, he's not being negative, he's not going into his shell, he's on the front foot. And when he does that, it can be absolutely devastating. Sixteen. I can tell you Rob Milkins has won the first frame against Ricky Walden on the colours. Not good news for Jordan Brown or Matthew Selt. Twenty three. Twenty four. Wanted to play the red into the top left, but because of the slight awkwardness of the queuing, didn't want to take an unnecessary risk. They've had some big occasion matches, these two. Played in the quarter-final of the Tour Championship a couple of years ago in Newport. Selby was really good that day. Won 10-3 with an array of breaks. 2020 Champion of Champions quarter-final. Selby won 6-5. Making it a really solid 74 in the decider, I recall. And there was the semi-final of the 2018 China Open in Beijing. Selby winning 10-8. 46. He also beat Wilson in the semi-final of the 2017 China Open. 6-4. Then the quarter-final of the world in 2016, Selby 13-8. So you get the pattern. Just a bit awkward queuing here. Got the frame basically won, except he, ha he hasn't won it yet. He's got to put a few more reds away. Just not quite comfortable on this. Forty-seven. One of Selby's assets, and he's got plenty he does have a better than average reach so on shots like that he's favored well also his actions changed dramatically from when he was youngster remember he used to have that sort of swaying action before he addressed the cue ball he was like a sniper <laughs> back and forth still a little bit of movement but it's nowhere near what it was 55 you mentioned the Tour Championship, that's for the top eight at the cutoff point, which is to the Turkish Masters in March. At the moment, Wilson is third and Selby's fifth, so at the moment, they'll both be in. And certainly, Karen Wilson, I think, will be there because he's in, obviously, the, the other player series of Enzies in the German Masters. It seems unlikely he's going to miss out. Selby in good shape for that as well. Wasn't in it last year, of course. 63. And good to see both of them are taking no risks. They're on the start sheet for the shootout here at the end of the month. Well, yeah, there's also the Bet Victor bonus prize, 150,000, which I, I was talking to Karin yesterday about the Tour Championship, and he actually brought that bonus prize up himself, so he's, <laughs> he's fully aware of it. Anyway, Mark Selby looks like he's done enough, just this red to make absolutely sure. 70. It looked a great chance, and he's taken it well.
76. Seventy-seven. We have seen some disjointed snooker on table one today, but that's not the case in this match. Eighty-two. Eighty-three. So to make the century he needs to deal with the last red as well. 89, cheers man. Just missed out in frame one, he didn't get on the penultimate red, broke down on 94. Ninety-five. Yeah, he had to get reasonably close to that to pot it, and he has done. So, 96. Mark Selby then, this blue for a century, and he can just set a new high break target of 128. 98. You suspect he probably won't last, but we are kind of running out of matches, aren't we? <laughs> There's not that many left to be played. 103. One hundred and six. One hundred and ten. It's not been a good day so far for Matthew Selt. One hundred and fifty. Beaten three one by Kyron Wilson. Three nil by Jordan Brown. We'd love to see Ricky Walden beat Rob Milkins. He's 1 0 down. Now he's refusing the black here. On the frame. Oh, Matt how Selby. about this? That's incredible. He doesn't know the high break price. I've never seen the like. Never seen the like. So what? the fortunes of Matt Selt, who I was just talking about, have just gone £500 better off. He's just telling him now what he's done. Selby smiling, but. I wouldn't be smiling, I'd be crying. <laughs> what What a faux pas, what a faux pas. <laughs> Kyron loving it, and Matt Selt is as well. Anyway, Selby, 2-1 up, even though he's missed out on 500 quid. <laughs> They say you see something new every day. Well, I'm not so sure, but I certainly saw something there. You know, I was thinking about this during the, the break, frame. Dave. For years, I'd be writing little reports from the Willie Thorne Snooker Centre about various junior tournaments that Mark Selby won, where he'd play all day, play his heart out for 50 quid. There, oh, just a, a lapse of, of thought, of concentration. Incredible. Probably in his own mind, he thought there must be a break in the 130s. I won't bother with the black. And then it suddenly occurred to him as he sat down, he asked the referee, oh, what is the high break? 
And Rob Spencer knew the answer, 127. But by, by then it was too late to go and pot the black. Mark Selby has earned a lot of money from snooker, several millions, but he'll be sick at <laughs> that. He'll be sick. And he's got a lengthy memory. Of course, he made a 147 at the Champion of Champions, for which he received nil. And he often brings that up. Although we could put it to rights here, Dave. Well, now we can bring this up. Because <laughs> I get the feeling you won't have heard the last of that. Ah. What? This time, not on the black. <laughs> Clean that red, he says. <laughs> There's a phrase in snooker that sometimes doesn't seem to make sense, but to players involved in the game, it does. He hit that too well. Big shot here, he's taking this blue on. Mark Selby won. on the practice table he get more than he didn't but of course in the match environment it's a bit different I actually wonder if his focus has been affected by what happened there because he decided to be livid with himself he doesn't need the 500 quid that's not the point it's, it's the sort of the show of vulnerability and also the ribbing he's going to get when he <laughs> when he goes onto the players room after this match I think the best shot I've seen Colin Wilson play today was the brown he knocked in with the rest. Then cut back into a blind pocket, into the yellow pocket, in fact. It was frame ball in his match against Matt Selt. He's had more low lights than highlights. But I think what happened in frame two was encouraging, and he'll be... 14. Very keen to make another sizable contribution here. Fifty. Well, that was a totally Fancy. unintended kiss. He wanted to avoid that red. Or at the very least, just graze it. Excellent. Really was excellent. Psychologically, it's hard when you've played a poor positional shot to get into the right frame of mind to knock in a tough one afterwards. Twenty-eight.
29. Unfolding developments on table two with a break of 47. Ricky Walden has just tidied up the second frame to equalise against Rob Milkins at 1-1. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Yeah, would have ideally liked to touch more angle on that red than he had, but he helped himself out with running side. Sort of feels like the winning shot. He's still got to obviously get 40. over the line, but what a chance this is now. It's been a very open match, hasn't it? A quick match, high scoring. 45. One thing now, he knows the high break, doesn't he? They all know it now. So Karen Wilson will be doing his best not only to take the money off Matt Selt, but to, as they used to say on Bullseye, show Mark Selby what he could have won. Yeah, and it's not going to be a boat if you live in Birmingham. 52. Fifty-three. So, too much more to do to actually win the frame. And he'll make a point, I'm sure, of making sure he makes the high break. It's all part of it, isn't it? The mind games and the psychology. See how funny the jester finds it. 60. 61. The break goes to 61. The lead goes to 60. So Wilson needs colour red. Sixty-seven. Thing to do now is ask what the high break is, even though he already knows. <laughs> you see, you're putting your own cruel ways onto other people, Dave. Hey, what? Well, I bet Selby would do that in this position. You can bet your bottom dollar. Seventy six. Well, as it stands as a possible one three four on. Eighty three. Eighty four. <laughs> Karen Wilson, eighty four, on the frame. Well, I don't know whether Selby feels better or worse. What we do know is that with a break of 84, Kyron Wilson has forced a decider. The winner of our next frame, which is coming up after the break, will be in the playoffs.
When two of the game's finest practitioners go head-to-head, -head, you expect break-building fireworks. That's what we've received so far from Mark Selby. He's Breaks of 94 Mark and 121 Selby's from him. 66 and 84 from Kyron Wilson. 2-2. Two -two. Will the decider be equally fluent? Or as many deciders tend to go, will it be a little nervy? can tell you over on table two, although the frame isn't over yet, Ricky Walden's going to win it to take a 2-1 lead over Rob Milkins. One. And in first here, having manoeuvred the cue ball into an open space on the pink. If that doesn't go, the blue will. It's Selby. It's a somewhat stressful time for Matthew Selt. His high break has been put under threat repeatedly on both sides of this arena. 90. Now Ricky Walden's got a chance. He's on 90 with 51 left. 91. Yeah, and Selt also, of course, at the moment he's sixth in the table, so he's got his last match later against Robert Milkins. Massive match for those two. Well, Selt has dodged a bullet there. Walden Mr. Black off its spot on 91. So the break remains intact. Walden leads 2-1 against Milkins. Thanks, Mark. Seven. Eight. Mark Selby, not quite as proficient with the rest as Kyron Wilson, Sorry. but the fact is, I don't think anyone is. He's still a, a fine rest player, Selby, as he displayed there. Hello. Yeah, so the first chance to win this match is Mark Selby's. It's been a high-scoring con <coughs> excuse me, contest. Sixty. Yeah, sure. When a player plays that shot and comes up just a, a tad Spencer. short, it's normally when they dug into the cue ball ever so slightly. No great issue, though. 25. And the next shot could determine the fate 
of the match. Decided not to go into them because there's one loose red from which he can definitely go into them. 30. Well, he's got a few more into play as he builds a lead here in the decider. Oh, but the black has stayed out. Mike Selby, 31. And they all sort of, like you were saying on table two earlier, they can drop in, that didn't. They're all watching the black to see if it would, but it stayed on the lip. And if you want to nominate someone to play a shot like the one Wilson has just played, it would be him because he's such a straight shooter. Now he's got the chance to go off a black over a pocket into the bunch. with a couple of open reds I think he was sensible just to play it nice and straightforward Now, Wilson's missed a few of these blacks today by overcutting them. Catches the far jaw but drops in. 60. What we've not had in this match is a close frame, but maybe this will be the one. Selby had his chance. This is Wilson's. Still going to develop these reds, though. We just saw a fleeting glimpse of a possible plant on the two reds to left 24. middle. Twenty-five. What a bonus they were. Yeah, and that top red certainly pops. Doing so, he's going to disturb the others as well. As he edges in front 32. by a point here. Thirty-three. Yeah, so this is a definite chance to win it now at this visit.
The very latest fourth. on table two. Walden's going nicely again. In first in the fourth frame on a break of 40. Already 2 1 up on Rob Milkins. Four two. Forty eight. Forty nine. The red closest to the left hand side cushion could cause an issue. But Selby will be sitting there pondering over that missed black off its spot, which was out of the blue. Worth saying, of course, Selby does have another match in the group phase, so he can he can get to four points. He will if he beats Jamie Jones. Karen Wilson looks like he's going to get there before him. It's all about now the last red. Delightful. 63. So this is the ball that will confirm Karen Wilson's involvement in the playoffs here this evening. Taking these very 64. impressively. He looks so cool, so composed, so controlled. 64. And the match that clinches his playoff place for me has been 69. He's premier performance of the group. 71. Remember 1-0 and 2-1 down on each occasion. Responding. 74. And it's going to be simultaneous victories here because on table two, Ricky Walden is over the line against Rob Milkins at 3-1, even though he's still break-building. 83. Mark Selby will remember this match for two blacks, one he didn't attempt and lost £500 potentially as a result. The other one that he missed. That missed black Foul. mattered not. Mark Selby Karen Wilson Karen with Wilson breaks 89. of 66, Brain. 84, and a really good um, knock to complete victory. Defeats Mark Selby by...